All right, here we have a person standing on a scale inside an elevator. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at two things. First, I'm gonna walk you through how to calculate the reading on this scale as the elevator moves around. Then in doing that, we're gonna wind up talking about something called apparent weight, which is really the fact that you don't actually feel the force of gravity. What you feel is something holding you up. See, the first thing we need to do here is look at the free body diagram for a person in this elevator. A free body diagram is just a picture showing all the individual forces acting on an object. So looking at this person, first there's the force by gravity, or the weight, acting downward on this person. And the way we calculate the force by gravity is by multiplying the person's mass by g, the acceleration due to gravity which on Earth is 9.8 meters per second squared. Now, in the absence of other forces, this person would just free fall downward, like an apple from a tree, meaning there has to be something holding up our person. And in this problem, that force is actually coming from the scale. Now, where most people get stuck on this problem is in just what the scale actually reads. See, when you stand on a scale, the scale doesn't read how hard gravity is pulling down on you. Instead, the scale reads how hard it's having to push up. I mean, just try jumping up and down on a scale. You'll see the scale reading go up and down, not because you suddenly weigh more or less, but because the scale isn't having to push consistently on you. Now, the whole point behind a free body diagram like this is that it helps us apply Newton's second law to the problem. See, the second law is an equation that says the net force, or sum of all forces acting on an object, is equal to that object's mass times acceleration. And a free body diagram is really just a picture of the left half of Newton's second law, or what we'd call the net force. So to solve for the reading on this scale, we're gonna set the sum of these two forces equal to the person's mass times acceleration. Now, force is a vector, meaning direction matters. So we have to make a distinction between forces up and forces down. So if we say up is the positive direction, this upward force by the scale is positive, and the downward force by gravity is gonna be negative. And rearranging this, this leaves us with an equation that relates the reading on this scale to the acceleration of the person in the elevator. So let's look at a simple scenario where this elevator is at rest and our person, uh, let's give them a mass of 50 kilograms, is just standing there. In this case, the acceleration of the elevator is zero. So going back to our equation, plugging in the m, the mass is 50 kilograms, g, the acceleration due to gravity is 9.8, and a is equal to zero in our equation we find the scale is gonna read a value equal to the weight of the person, or 490 newtons. And there's no big surprises here. You might expect a scale to read the weight of whatever you put on it. But next, let's say this elevator is moving steadily upward at two meters per second. Now you may be inclined to think that there now has to be more force upward on the person because they're moving up. But remember, going back to our equation, the force on the person is dependent on their acceleration, not on their speed. A over here is still zero, meaning none of this math changes. The person in the elevator, they feel completely normal. So let's change the motion of this elevator again. And this time let's make this elevator accelerate upward at three meters per second squared. And this is where things start to get a little weird. See, in order to make the person accelerate upward, there has to be more force up on the person than down. Or going back to our equation, if you plug in A is positive 3, and I say it's positive because it's upward, the force on the scale will be 640 newtons. And it's not that the person actually weighs more. Remember, weight's always mg. So for this person, that's 490 newtons. But our scale reads more. And what's critical is the person will actually feel heavier. And that feeling of weight is what we call their apparent weight. Now, if we change this and have the elevator accelerate downward at 3 meters per second squared, going back to our equation, A is now equal to negative 3 because it's accelerating downward or in the negative direction. And the reading on the scale or the apparent weight of the person is 340 newtons. 
our person over here feels lighter. Even though gravity is unchanged, it's still mg, or 490 newtons. Now, the idea that you can't feel gravity, and instead you feel your apparent weight, can be hard to wrap your head around. So let's take this scenario one step further. Let's cut the cable of this elevator so that the elevator free falls downward. Any object in free fall on the surface of the Earth accelerates downward at roughly 9.8 meters per second squared. So plugging negative 9.8 into our equation for A, we find the force by the scale on the person must equal zero, meaning nothing is holding this person up. They're in free fall, just like the elevator. But the important thing here is what this person feels. Imagine this person just woke up from a nap with no idea they were in a free falling elevator. With no knowledge of the elevator's motion and nothing holding them up, the person would just float around inside the elevator, feeling weightless, like an astronaut. Now, they aren't actually weightless. Gravity's still pulling on them, but their apparent weight, or what they feel, is zero. And this is actually true for astronauts in space, too. The acceleration due to gravity at the International Space Station is about 9 meters per second squared, meaning the ISS and everyone in it are perpetually free-falling toward the Earth. An astronaut in orbit feels weightless, not because there's no gravity in space, but because nothing is holding them up. Now there's one last example I want to show you that really separates this idea of apparent weight from the true force of gravity. Let's take this elevator and, and strap a rocket on this and accelerate it downward at 19.6 meters per second squared, or two times the acceleration due to gravity. See, plugging in negative 19.6 for the acceleration, we find the force by the scale is actually negative, meaning the scale would actually have to pull downward on the person. Or more realistically, uh, we could just set the scale on the ceiling of this elevator, and the person could stand upside down on the scale, feeling completely normal. The force between the person and the scale would be 490 newtons downward, and this is the sort of thing pilots have to worry about when it's dark or stormy. A pilot may feel in their seat as though they're flying along straight and level, when in fact, they're upside down and about to crash. So next time you step into an elevator, I want you to think about your apparent weight and how heavy you feel compared to how hard gravity is actually pulling on you. So I hope you found this useful, and on that note, that's all for now.